In figure 10.2, we show Julia's physical frontier, which indicates what she's able to consume. Now, let's add her preferences. An individual's preference is represented by indifference curves. We assume that the more an individual consumes of one good, the smaller the value of an additional unit of consuming that good. So there is diminishing marginal returns to consumption. In an intertemporal consumption choice, that means that the more the individual consumes now, the less utility it gets from consuming even more now. Because Julia's indifference curve has this characteristic of diminishing returns to consumption, she would prefer to smooth consumption. So she wants to avoid consuming a lot in one period and little in the other. So we have an indifference curve which is bowed toward the origin as a result of diminishing marginal returns to consumption in the two periods. And the slope of the indifference curve is the marginal rate of substitution between consumption now and consumption later. So the question now is, how much will Julia consume? Well, she's going to both check what's feasible for her, so what choices she has, and her preferences. So let's take one point. Let's take point C. At C, the marginal rate of substitution is high. You can see that the slope of her indifference curve is very steep at C. So she's not consuming much now. Diminishing marginal returns means that she prefers to increase consumption now when she is at point C. Now let's take another point. Let's take a point to the right, point E. At E, the marginal rate of substitution is low. In this case, Julia consumes a lot now, but not much later. Does diminishing marginal returns imply in this case that she would like to move some consumption to later? Given the choice indicated by the line CE, Julia would choose point F. Point F is on the highest indifference curve she can get and she is smoothing consumption.